Hi, I'm Dr. Vivian Schneidman, and I am the Chief Medical Correspondent for Breezen with Bierman. I am so delighted today because my former patient, Rohan Sharma, is here with me to talk about his <coughs> new job with NAMI, the National Association for the Mentally Ill. And I'm really proud because Rohan's doing so well that he has a job. <laughs> and I'm also really proud because he's become so successful. He has been through such a roller coaster in his young life, and I'm just going to let him tell you about it. So Rohan, can you tell us some of the things that brought you here today? Absolutely, thanks so much for having me, Dr. Steinman. My pleasure. So currently I'm a speaker for uh, NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Illness, and more specifically the uh, ETS Ending the Silence program. And what we do is we basically go to middle schools and high schools and we try to uh, talk to the kids about mental health, why it's important to get help, and basically end the stigma around mental illness. Now, how I got the job was, um, like you said, it's a very uh, interesting story. I was uh, in medical school briefly over at Drexel, and then in the uh, fall of 2011, I was put on antidepressants. My bipolar type 1 was undiagnosed at the time, um, and the antidepressants, while well, they got rid of the depression, they spun me to an even higher manic state. And what ended up happening was um, I barely slept for like a month straight very uh, uh, very reckless behavior. I was uh, drinking almost every night, uh, went out and got a tattoo without thinking about it. Um, I was gambling, uh, a lot of uh, marijuana to, to sleep. And then um, after a period of four, 30 days of barely sleeping, there was four days um, of no sleep whatsoever. Went into a completely psychotic episode. Um, first, I opened my own neck up to try and dissect it. Then I went out and uh, got a firearm and attempted to rob my drug dealer um, and ended up getting locked up, having to do um, about two weeks first because the, the judge put a uh, detainer on, on my uh, situation. Once I was bailed out, I ended up getting expelled from medical, sc medical school for what happened. Um, it was a very, very tough period uh, in my life. Um, gained a lot of weight. I was very depressed. I was very anxious about what was going to happen with the case. Um, finally, a year and a half, my lawyer was fighting the case, and he said, um, Basically, you have an option here. You can take this deal for 23 months in county jail, 11 and a half to 23 months, uh, where I would have the max. Um, or you can take it to trial, and if you lose there, you're, you would face up to 10 years in prison. So I want to interrupt you just sure, for a second yeah. because, you know, Rohan was my patient, but the family came to me because I'm a forensic psychiatrist. And I've spoken here before about the book that I wrote that came out last year, which is Forensic Psychiatry, A Lawyer's Guide. And mm -hmm. today is not my chance to promote, promote my book. <laughs> but every lawyer and judge should know that for any case involving a mentally ill defendant, there is a way to utilize the legal, the legal system, the criminal justice system, to help that defendant be considered differently from a defendant who understands the full consequence of his or her actions. And in this case, that never happened. And Rohan's attorney didn't know any of this, didn't understand it. Even though, even though when he was picked up by the police, everybody understood that he was having a psychotic episode, right. even the guy that he tried to rob. Yeah. What happened right after the police came? Where did you go? Uh, I was at uh, Temple Hospital. Very Psychiatric briefly. Hospital. Well, I was actually to, to okay. get my neck stitched up right. as well. But, but they, that was, yeah, but they, they knew. Did. Right. They knew they treated him psychiatrically, and then when he was stabilized, they took him to jail. Right. And they knew, everybody knew, and yet the legal system chose to ignore the fact that this whole thing happened, and so did his medical school, chose to ignore the fact that this young man who was, you know, a very intelligent person and a medical student was in the throes of a mental illness. So now, go on. Yeah, well, you just touched on it, too. Another point I wanted to bring up that uh, I was expelled from medical school, and these are, you know, professional, these are all doctors, and I felt they didn't take into consideration an underlying uh, health issue. Um, so, I, yeah, I felt that was really unfair. I just want to put that out for anybody else who, who has the situation to uh, have more compassion for people who are mentally ill, because, like you said, you're not thinking... Um, in a it, psychotic episode. And it's, it's actually not just compassion, there's yeah. actually a law, it's called the Americans with Disabilities Act, right. that prohibits people that have a medical problem from being discriminated against. So it's actually illegal. But for some reason, psychiatric disorders are not considered medical problems, even though, and this is what I teach my medical student, when I yeah. go to teach the medical students, 
I, I say this. I say, and I'm going to pretend. Let's pretend you're uh, still sure, yeah. Still. Can you live without a hand? Uh, yes. Can you live without a foot? Yes. Can you live without a kidney? Sh sure, yeah. Can you even live without a heart? Uh, yes, if you had a transplant. A transplant yeah. or even an artificial heart. Can you live without a brain? Uh, no, you cannot. So what's the most important organ in your body? I would say the brain. But that's I'm the not in medical way, school, but that's right? what I would but say. But you would say that, you know what, if you stop right. 100 people on the street, they would probably answer the same way. Yeah. But it's the only thing that the whole world seems to think, eh, your brain, who cares? Right. It's not important. And this is what we teach the students, because you can't see it doesn't make it any less real. There's mm -hmm. definitely uh, brain chemistry going on there. Otherwise, medication would be ineffective. Um, right. Right. So, go ahead. I don't want yeah. to hijack. This no, is it's so okay. interesting. <laughs> Not but all. I just wanted to point yeah. that out because I think it's so important. Yeah, so um, where I was at was uh, the, the court had offered me um, three to five years at first, which I had turned down because, I again, a medical student doing time upstate is not, you know, an ideal situation. So um, after being entered in a mental health court, that's when he got the deal for 11 half to 23. Um, and, again, he's, he told me if you have two options. You could take this to trial. They'll give you five to ten maybe, or like you could do the max uh, ten So what did you end up doing? Because I want to get on to yeah, what sure, you yeah, my, um, Yeah, so uh, I ended up taking the deal for 23 months and then followed by ten years probation. I got out in April of 2015. You know, it was the hardest, obviously a very difficult period in my life, but I'm just so glad I made it. Um, ended up getting this amazing job with NAMI, which I love to do. I love going to schools and spreading my story. And it's just a reason I'm so passionate is just this is a program I wish I had when I was young. And maybe, um, you know, this we wouldn't have to go down this road in the first place. But definitely uh, ended in a very positive note. So, What's your favorite part about speaking to the kids? Uh, it's, it's actually funny you say that. I just um, I ran into a, uh, a parent in a recent workshop, a parent of one of the students we spoke with. And she comes up to her mom and says, you know, Mom, I think I have depression. And it just means that just shows that this program can work. People are getting results from it, and it's just an amazing program. That's so awesome. Yeah. So we still do have a few more minutes. I know that you brought this flyer about an upcoming Stride for Mental Health Awareness. Can you talk about that a little bit? Right, yeah. We have a, uh, a charity walk coming up for uh, NAMI. It's called, the website is namibuckstride.org. And if you guys would like to walk or just sponsor one of us, uh, definitely log on to the website. You can register yourself or um, sponsor one of us. I'm on Team uh, Young Nuts is what we're called. <laughs> so if you would like to um, be a part of that, you can definitely donate to that. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. They have food, uh, food games. Um, I'll, I'm also, uh, this will this will all be on my YouTube channel as well. It's uh, Rex Mundi, R-X space M-U-N-D-I, where I have another short video Dr. Shimon was a part of as well that goes a little bit more in depth into into my story. And also I have some freestyle videos up there because I rap. So if you like to check that out, if you're into hip hop, definitely check that out as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically about it. And any any further questions? Or? Yeah, I, I I'm curious what you think about. I mean, I kind of know, but if we can find something positive to say to young people who need to be on medication. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, I I it's tough for me to even say because I argue with my current psychiatrist a lot about uh, medication, and I feel. I feel personally I don't need it, and uh, I can't be promoting that to kids who, because there are cases where you definitely need medication. I felt like I don't, but um, again, I'm, I can't play, be my own doctor, so right. I am on medication now currently, yes. Um, she she prescribed Lamictal, which is a mood stabilizer, and uh, I'm also on Prolixin, which is a, a neuroleptic, I believe. An injectable, you're in an injectable Injectable, right, right, right. Which again, I, you know, I, f I try and fight it, but I'm on probation, so legally I do have to take my uh, medication. But not all of them are bad. That's, I guess that's the message I would leave to the kids. Not all of them are bad. And uh, if you got to take it, there's no shame in that either. So get the help you need. I think that's really, is that, would that be the take home message? That there's no shame in that? That's, yeah, it's definitely a big message, right? Is that there's no shame in having to take medication. There's no shame in having to uh, get help either. I was recently in the hospital as a 302 and there's no, there's no shame in that either. You know, right. get the help. So we're need. in New Jersey, but a 302 is a civil commitment where you're put into the hospital against your will because you might be a danger to yourself or others. Rohan lives in Pennsylvania. But, you know, I think that that it's really important. I so appreciate you being here to share this with us. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. It was great. Thank you so much. Rohan Sharma, former psychiatric patient <laughs> and current spokesman for NAMI, National Association for the Mentally Ill. And rapper. And well. rapper. <laughs> and all around great person. Had to throw that in. Thanks, Dr. Shabba. Thank you.